Today I'm going to show you how I make a quilt pattern for foundation paper piecing style quilting in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to pull up a new document. Here we go. And I'm starting just with a simple one today. Also note that you don't need to use Illustrator for this. You could use another program like Paint or uh, you could even just do this by hand with a ruler and a piece of paper. But I have an Adobe Illustrator subscription. I think it's $29 Australian a month. And uh, that's what I prefer to use. So I'm making a 6 inch by 6 inch square. And I'm making it perfectly square. And now I'm making another square to go on top of our original, and this one is the seam allowance. So I do a quarter inch seam allowance all around. So if I want a six inch by six inch square, then I have six and a half inch by six and a half inch seam allowance. And I just center that around. All right, so now we've got our blank template. And I'm not going to get too messy or too complicated. This quilt square isn't particularly exciting, but it's just a brief how-to, um, sort of how I work in Illustrator. So starting out with this little square in the middle, and I'm going to center that. Just click and drag until the little X's in the middle of the boxes line up. Right, and now I'm going to take the pen tool and again just making sure you can see that little pink line that the pen is centered because I want everything to be like sharp and angular and equidistant. So I'm basically just making another square, but you know, in a diamond shape that goes around our centerpiece. And now what I'm going to do is resize the centerpiece so that the points match up with the diamond I just created. So click and drag. And if you're not familiar with Illustrator, there are tons of really good tutorials for it. If you've ever used paint, this is kind of like a step up. It's actually pretty easy to get the hang of. I'd say after about two hours of playing around, you could definitely be at the proficiency that I'm at for this pattern tutorial. But again, if you don't want to pay for a subscription and you're just interested in making a foundation paper piece by hand, you can totally do this with a quilt square ruler and a piece of paper and pen. Okay, so I've got all the pattern blocks that I want. So now I'm going to number them in the order that they're sewn. So this center one has to be number one because it's got uh, shapes all around the edges. So there's no way that we could come back and put number one in if it was like number six. We would have to set it in. So I'm just going clockwise. We got one and then the triangles around it are two, three, four, five. And then the triangles around those triangles are six, seven, eight, and nine. So it's a super simple block, but you can see easily how sewing order and pattern pieces add up pretty quickly. And this particular pattern is one that you don't need to foundation paper piece. You could just sew in like the normal quilting manner. But I prefer the foundation paper piecing style because I think it gives a cleaner, sharper look. Uh, the paper keeps me on track, so I'm not ending up with like a square that's kind of out of skew. And it's just, I, I think it's easier to like mock up patterns in Illustrator and print it out instead of spending all that time cutting out squares with my little roller cutter thingy uh, on my desk. 
So I've just taken off the numbers off this pattern, just selected and deleted the little order of numbers. And now I'm selecting the pattern we just made and I've turned it into live paint. So you go to um, edit or uh, object live paint and then you can paint these shapes. So this is just playing around with color really. And this way gives me a good visual of what I can expect from my finished pattern piece or my finished quilt before I go out and buy fabric and, you know, spend some money. So I actually am going to mock up into a more full-sized um, shape. Keep in mind, it, it's six square or um, six inch squares, uh, four across and four down. So it's not like a huge project, but it just gives me a feeling for how everything's going to kind of look together. So starting with two across and two down, I'm just going to change the colors in some of these blocks because what I can see now, yeah, I like it, but you know, it's pretty basic. I think I'd like a little more color variation and interest. So I'm going to go back to the live paint and since all of these objects are selected as live painting compatible objects. I just pick the color I'm going with and click to fill in the space. So you can also scan in um, fabrics or pictures and upload them to your swatch library in Illustrator. So if you had like a starry night pattern or a, a tie dye or something that you wanted to see mocked up, you don't have to just use flat colors like me. You could upload it into Illustrator and use that to paint your object. But for this purposes, this is just like a super simple tutorial and um, I'm not actually dipping into my fabric stash with this. I'm just sort of mocking up an idea. Ooh, don't like that yellow. So I've selected more of a peachy kind of tone. And in selecting these, I could actually print this out with, you know, color on my printer, bring the paper to the fabric store, and then make my selection. And now I'm just, I've highlighted the first four squares that I did, and now I'm copy pasting, and now I'm going to uh, right click, and then go to transform and reflect. So you can see it's kind of mirror imaged its sister. And now I've selected all these and I'm just dragging and dropping them right below. And I'm going to reflect again, just on the opposite axis. Okay. So yeah, pretty simple, pretty cute, you know, pretty basic sort of Thanksgiving colors. And I'm just going to drop the line weight down a little bit because in real life we wouldn't see these heavy black lines. And now that the line weight is dropped, I can see that there's a little bit of space in between my squares. So I'm just eking them up and over to the side a little bit.